Now let's look at the Grinnell Cronin model covered under reading 16 of Capital Market Expectations for level 3. So one common problem that student faces is they cannot differentiate uh, what to do with the number of shares outstanding and the share repurchase yield. So for example, let's say Albert is an economist at a multi-strategy asset management firm and each year he provides his firm with a report that includes a series of market forecasts. And as part of his report, Albert uses the Grinnell Cronin model to forecast the expected rate of return on equities for the next 10 years. So here we have the dividend yield, the change in PE multiple, the inflation rate, and the change in number of shares outstanding, and real total earnings growth rate. So based on this, we have the 10-year forecast, which is analyzed. So if you want to use the Grinnell Cronin model, the formula is so the expected return is approximately equals to the forecast dividend yield then we minus the number of shares outstanding then we add in the expected inflation rate we add in the real total earnings growth rate and the change in PE multiple so in this case the forecast dividend yield is 1.5 percent now be careful with this part so the change uh, delta s here is a change in the number of shares outstanding so in this case they have issued more shares which means there will be a dilution so this will be negative 0.5%, so it's a negative return to shareholders. And then we add in the expected inflation, 1.1%. We add in the real total earnings growth rate, 2.7%. And then we add in the change in PE multiple, that's 0.8%. So that will be equals to 5.6%. Now let's look at another variation. Now what if we were given the share repurchase here instead? Of the change in the number of shares outstanding of 0.3 percent so in this case share repurchase yield means that the company purchased the shares back from shareholders therefore it results in a positive return so be careful the share repurchase yield here is negative change delta s so if you look back at the formula we have the forecast dividend yield minus the change in number of shares outstanding plus expected inflation rate and the total the real total earnings growth rate and change in pe it is this entire portion that is equals to your share repurchase yield. Which is 0.3%. Uh, so in this case, when you answer, this would be 1.5%. Okay, but this whole thing would then be changed to plus 0.3%. Okay, so then you add in the expected inflation rate, the real growth rate of earnings, and then the change in PE then you can solve it again. So that's 6.4%. Uh, so just be careful with the share repurchase yield. Okay, if they give that to you, make sure you remember that this amount is equal to negative delta S. Okay, and delta S itself is the change in the number of shares outstanding.